what's up guys welcome back to a brand new youtube video in today's video i'm going to be showing you my process when it comes to retouching photos in photoshop uh, before i get into it if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you drop a like you comment below and you subscribe if you want to see more content kind of like this but with that being said let's just hop right into editing All right, so I have the photo in front of me. I'm using myself as an example today because I don't have the best skin. My eyebrows were kind of whack in this, so it's a really good example of what you can do with photo retouching in Photoshop. So that is why I'm using myself, and I also don't think other people would enjoy me using their images on a Photoshop tutorial with retouching. So the first thing I will do when I get into Photoshop is I will make a duplicate of my layer just in case I mess it up. I can just delete it and go back, but I will work on the copy that I created. From there, I'll get into the blemish retouching. This photo for the most part is pretty simple to retouch. A lot of people would probably go out here and get all the hair, but I really don't care about that kind of stuff. If it's on the face, then yeah, I'll get rid of it. And to do that, I will use the spot healing brush tool and I will zoom in as close as I wanna go and I will just, you know, start painting over everything that I wanna take out of the image. That involves pimples, cleaning up my eyebrows, um, hairs that are in the face that I don't want to be in the face, that kind of thing. And I'll just go through and make the skin as visually pleasing as I possibly can. And I do this before I do any frequency separation because it just it makes everything look a lot cleaner when you do that. So I'm going to speed this process up. For this tool, uh, you're going to want to use a small brush because if you use a large one, it can make your photo look a little flat in certain spots and unnatural, and you really kind of just want to avoid that. So use a smaller brush if you can, and do it that way. All right, I am done that portion. As you guys can see, this is before and this is after i cleaned my face up quite a bit i cleaned up my eyebrows and that was all done with the healing brush tool and i think i used the clone stamp just a little bit for my eyebrow nothing too crazy that tool is very hard to use properly so i kind of just try to stay away from it and just use the spot healing brush from this point what i will do is i will open my beautify plugin and i will start retouching with those tools there if you guys don't know what beautify is it's a plugin that automatically does all of the uh, effects for like frequency separation all that kind of stuff I'll go through it a little bit more in depth but um, it's basically it does it all for you and then it shuffles it into a folder and all you have to do is color on the folder a lot of people could look at it and be like oh that's cheating but it really does speed up the process for me and makes things so much easier, especially if I have a lot of photos to do. So I really enjoy it. I honestly thought it was going to be a scam and that it wasn't going to be a great tool. It was on one of those Facebook ads, but I decided to buy it anyway, and it is my most used Photoshop tool now. But like I was saying, once I'm done all of the removal of all the blemishes, I will go into my Beautify plugin and I will add some filters. Um, the first thing I'll do is eyelashes. Basically, I don't wear makeup. And when girls do wear makeup, they like the look that makes their eyelashes super full and just out there. So I like to apply this. I don't wear makeup myself, but I do like the look of like having big eyelashes. So I do apply this to myself because why not? Like I said, it adds everything into a neat folder, so it does all of the effects and whatnot, and then puts it in a folder and creates a mask, so all I had to do was draw on it with white for the effect to come through. If I wanted to make the effect less, I would take black, and then I would just paint over it and, you know, basically erase it. The eyelashes, you could do that on the eyebrows, but I choose not to. Um, from there, I'll do lipstick. This is a big one. As you can see, it added it all into a nice folder here and you paint on it. So I'll paint on my lips. Don't worry, I won't leave it like this. I just like to make my lips a little bit darker because when they're dry, they often just blend into my skin. So what I'll do is I'll just change my opacity to where I see fit. So this is before, this is after. I think that's still a little bit too much. So I'll just decrease it a little bit. Yeah, something like that is good. 
From that point, if I had my teeth showing, I'd probably do teeth whitening, but since I don't, I'll go right into the frequency separation. You can do all of this manually, but it just it's so time consuming and I never really could figure out how to do it properly, and this plugin I found does a very good job at doing what I want it to do. So again, it put it, everything in a folder. I'll take the white paintbrush and I'll paint everywhere I want the frequency separation to apply. And it does it amazingly. And of course, it, right now, as you can see, it's a little bit intense. So once I'm done painting everywhere I want it to kind of show up, I will actually decrease that a little bit. All right, so I painted everywhere but the eyes, the nostrils, and the lips. If I feel like I've painted over something, I'll just go in and erase it. And then as you guys can see, I kind of look a little bit plasticky. So I'll click on it and make sure the opacity is a little bit lower. So that's before, that is after. It just kind of flattens everything out and makes the things just a little bit more smooth. I really love the way that looks. So that's pretty much it for when uh, I do skin retouching from here. I'll add a color correction and all I do for that is the color balance and I just do what I see fit. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's what it looks like. This is before, it's pinky, more warm. This filter makes it bluey, kind of green. And there's one thing that I did forget to do that I actually always do. I'll use the dodge tool and I'll lighten up my eyes a little bit or the subject's eyes. So that's after, this is before. If I don't like how intense it is, I'll just control Z and do it again. And I'll change the exposure amount down a little bit and try again. I just do this because usually when you do a portrait, the first thing you want people to see is the eyes. You know, you want to drag them in somehow. And I have pretty bright eyeballs as it is. So when I do that, it just makes them that much more pop. So that's how I edit my photos. Um, and this is a self portrait. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want a little bit more of an in-depth review or tutorial on how I do this, let me know. Um, it's really not that hard, but I'll leave a link to the plugin in the description if you guys want to check it out. If you do use that link and purchase, I will get a kickback from it. Uh, but otherwise, I'm not paid to make this video on that plugin. I just thoroughly enjoy it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like, comment below, and subscribe if you are new and want to see more videos like this. And I'll catch you guys later. Adios.